spawning in the bottom right position. The red Zerg player, he needs to win this game or he is done from Startail. It is life! He's found some interesting ways to bounce back after each loss that he's had. But he's up against one of the most capable Terran players in the world, proving he is not just active in the summer. From Team Liquid, the Blue Terran, it is Tasia! I really thought coming into this series, the way that Tasia was acting, the way that he was you know, behaving, it really felt like he was just expecting to lose this. He, he mentioned on Twitter that he wasn't feeling great. He mentioned in the pre-game interview that the settings weren't ideal for him. But he's giving us a fantastic performance here. A nail-biting series. Three games to two, Liquid Tasia. He's currently leading. Look at that, there are drone scouts moving around from life and scouting around for anything. Is he going to go for that hatchery on the other side again? Well, I mean, I do like him using the scout. This, I mean, a two racks would probably be one of the worst ways to lose this tournament mm. at this point. But he point. didn't check the left-hand side, which makes me really confused why he, he would he do this. He is sending a drone to his own natural, though, okay. so I don't, I don't think he'll be quite as aggressive as we've seen so far. Maybe if he saw a command center on the high ground, then he can make a snap decision, but the hatchery's been in place in his own natural this time, and he's just trying to do a little bit of a uh, little bit of damage to the SCVs with that drone. Nothing serious. And I feel like you should also anticipate that it'll be Reaper. Tasia hasn't won Barrack 6 Fast Expand, I don't think, at all in this tournament. And I think one advantage which life can have in the early stages of this game here is that it is a small map. Overlords will be able to get in good positions early. They'll be able to scout inside the main. They can scout on the natural to what's going on over there. And it is very difficult for Tasia to hide anything from life in this game. And it's almost that he can't hide aggression, but he cannot hide his greed either. So if there is a fast third command center, we talked about the likelihood of life trying to take this game in the early stages. And I think information gathering is gonna be vital in the decision making that we can see from life here. And it's, it's a very important thing to note, especially considering that Life has actually made a lot of aggressive plays that weren't able to kill his opponent still work in the long term. Mm -hmm. He's able to bring a lot of pressure and not actually be as far behind as maybe the common spectator, even just as a player seeing the games, would make you believe. So Life, there's, there's a lot of options. The Reaper will come in, though, for Tasia, and he's going to confirm that Life is going with his, his standard. He's sticking to his guns. Hatchery, gas, spawning pool. Can he get some drones? This is where Tasia tries to set the momentum of the game, set the pace of what could potentially be his crowning game. Well, if the Reaper goes through the mineral line, he would get surrounded, which is why he didn't chase those two low-health drones. But he's going to swing around again. He gets one drone. Um, does not get a second. So one drone kill, better than he's had before. He hadn't got any previously. But we do see Tasia's build starting to take shape. He has Tasia. a factory down and a second gas now. A very fast second gas relative to any other build that he has done. Yeah, and this can mean quite a few. Well, it can mean a couple of different things here. Could be Cloak Banshee. It could be the spin-off where we see even an armory being built here. It could be a second factory. What is he looking to do? What is that going to be coming down? Is Starport? There it is. The Starport's on the way. He could still very easily build a tech lab, and this could just be a Banshee play. He doesn't quite have the gas yet to go for anything like an armory. So there is the tech lab. With the second gas, he can actually go for a very quick cloak. But actually, look, he only has four SCVs mining gas. He's actually taken one off of each refinery. So he's not committing with the full gas money. He's not going to pump out a lot of Banshees, it seems, or at least go. He might even still be able to avoid getting cloaked, but still get his upgrades faster. Life spotted the second gas, but he didn't see that there was two SCVs inside, which is a bit of a big difference compared two to three. And three would be there that it could be quite a big investment. He's able to click on the refinery to see how much he's been mined from it, realizing that it is a fresh refinery there. And he does know that something's coming. He yes. doesn't know exactly what. He never went in deep enough to find the starport. Yeah, then that Banshee is on the way. He has the option to get Cloak, but he's not hes not taking it. And I do—I actually really like the way that Tasia's opened up with this because the Hellions and Reapers bring pressure, 
But by getting that refinery and just mining with four SCVs, three SCVs will bring in 100 gas a minute. By just using four, he's going a little bit over that. He's actually going to get the cloak, but it allows him to still keep a lot of minerals on the table. He can get his production up faster. He can build the engineering base earlier, and as we see here, this third command center as well. All right, two Hellions, two Reapers, hand and wheels down the map. All going to cross paths with the Zergling. Zergling does run back to its creep. So double evolution chamber is on its way, but that's quite a few Hellions now. These Queens are gonna have to defend. There's not that many Zerglings, and four Queens will push this back for now. It's gotta be careful though. Four Queens is not enough to defend against this if they come back in again. He will have to start producing Zerglings, which he is doing. Yeah, Hellion Reaper Banshee, Banshee well. can yeah. be pretty difficult to deal with with just the Queens or even just Zerglings as it all comes down to the control of Tasia, really. I mean, life makes some magic happen with Zerglings, but those Hellions can be very difficult to grab off of creep. But Tasia's engineering base are finishing up. As I said, a much more crisp timing compared to the last game on, on Derelict, or at least the game on Derelict, where his upgrades are much later. So it's a bit more evenly paced this time around, despite still getting the cloak out with the Banshee. It's a small adjustment, but it's basically Tasia saying that if he doesn't do any damage, kind of like Derelict Watcher, he's not as far behind as we saw. All right, well, we are starting to see some more drones being saturated towards that third base. Cloakport's cancelled, and Zergling's trying something up here, but they don't do anything. Do spot the third command center, I imagine. Well, of course they do. And these Hellions do retreat back. So in these two positions, with the openings that you, we've seen, Tasia going for the Cloak Banshee here, or the, the initial Cloak Banshee, but regular Banshee, is this an investment which hasn't paid off again, like we saw on Daryl at Watcher? Well, typically, at the very worst, a Cloak Banshee can force a reaction, and that's usually at least a Spore Crawler at each base. But Life's actually gotten away with, with just one Spore Crawler. He hasn't invested too much in the defending, so I think like he, I feel like he's on the, the upper end of this because he hasn't gotten many kills. But that being said, the Lair's about to complete, and the window for Tasia to hurt these unprotected bases is closing very quickly. Well, let's find out if he can get in that window. He's found the Queen, he's found a creep spread in the middle of the map and loses a heli in there, transfuses, or at least one of them is on that Queen. Command center's being placed in a different position to what we see usually. It's gonna be in the forward base, a more aggressive stance. Do you like this choice here? I think it's one of those positions that allow you to really press towards what the Zerg player would normally take as their fourth base. Mm. Typically speaking, you want to press it out by that third. Get you know you get a bit of the map control area, but it prevents them from dropping between your fourth base and your main, where your tech is, where your valuable buildings are. And the spire is coming in, but Tasia holds off another little wave of zerglings, and Life in turn actually decides to take that uh, that base on the right side. He saw he saw the command sign on the left, yeah, and smart. he's saying, "I don't want you to be able to rally." Because one of the cool things about Tasia's decision to do this is that when if Life tries to do counter harass towards a third base, the normal third base. It's a lot easier if Tasia's pushing on the left side of the map. But now Tasia's rally actually covers his third. So he can defend a little bit more easily as these Zerglings do shove him back. But Tasia's already found out he lands the Viking and he's actually going to deny this fourth with just Hellions and Reapers. Wow, that's a pretty big move here by Tasia and it is going to get cancelled. I can hardly imagine it. No, he doesn't even get cancelled. Actually gets picked off there. He really wanted to save that. And that's a nice start here for Tasia, edging towards the victory on this map. Two twos on its way with combat shields. He can pick up these units to get out if he wants to, but he can turn around and fight. He does have more, and these queens a little bit exposed. Painling speed not quite ready, seconds away. And losing the queen here, Tasia getting a lot of small victories already in this game. Yeah, he, he's starting to scoop up a king-sized lead as he presses in. The, the, the creep hasn't really been able to move towards the side of that. These Hellions are still alive, 12 minutes. This, this could be a repeat of the Whirlwind game if Tasia can maintain good splits and cost-effective trades. And without creep spread around that fourth base, it's going to be even harder for life to fight against the awesome control of the army that Tasia will be absolutely wanting to deploy on this right-hand side. But for now, he's moving to his opponent. Zell Nogatawa will take it. We'll see the army on the right-hand side. Banshee finally snapped up. <laughs> yes, it was. Zerglings, Mutalisks forward. That fourth base hasn't even finished yet for life. And we saw what happened on Whirlwind. Without that fourth base, Baneling counts are low. Oh, Widowmind picks off a few Zerglings for free, grabs seven. Mm. 
Mm. Nothing too bad outside. Yeah, he's just making the march here, Nathanius. He's coming down to this base. He starts it up with a drop, and now he begins his march. He's going to take the ramp, and life has to defend this. He cannot lose this. He really cannot lose this hatchery. And without the creep there, there's nothing he can do. There's the cancel on it. So Tasia maintaining that, that even economy. And with the mules, that means he's ahead. So two twos finishing up for the Terran as well. Tasia's army is becoming supercharged, super powered. And Life's had this force ready for a counter towards that northeast side, but it hasn't, he hasn't done anything with it. He hasn't made anything happen because the rally comes straight out of here. And if Tasia reacts in time, it'd be very difficult to deal damage. And there is the counter attack coming in from Live, trying to turn this game around. He gets into the natural. A couple of Baileys get in there as well as a fight going on the left hand side, too. The Widowmine picked off the Banelings that were going for the SCVs. Tasia just needs to defend this third base, but there's so many Banelings. If these SCVs escape, it'll be a miracle. They even get in the bunker, running for their lives and not able to connect on all these workers. Tasia's still hanging in there, but the Zergly's moving into the main base. He did clean up some of the, the SCVs in the natural. He's getting as much of a trade as he can. Muta swing back towards the third. Life knows he needs to make something happen now if he wants to stay alive, and he is doing it. But Tasia still has a massive army. He's brought his opponent's economy down to just 43 SCVs. The army size is a little bit equal here. We see down to the bottom right, 112 for Tasia, 96 for life. And he is going to come crashing in. There's Widermine behind this bunker. I'm not too sure if this is the best fight he can take there. Widermines, when are they going to detonate? On this right hand side, they do connect. Mm. He needs up about five Marines. It's actually a pretty good shot for life, but steps back, letting the Marauders tank some of these Baneling hits. And there's a lot of Marines. That fourth base is being rebuilt on the left side. And like I said, it's a stone's throw away between Tasia's third. And he, he, he can get there very quickly. There's not even creep spread between there. It's not, no, no creep spread at that fourth either. Tasia's marching forwards. He still has a good amount of income. And he's going to eliminate some creep, and another counterattack has been launched by Life. He's going to go towards the natural. Tasia turns around. He didn't rebuild that wall, so the Zerglings can get straight in. Widowmine doesn't do too much damage. Tasia is going to chase this force back to his natural expansion. The Mutalist should be able to escape, though, as the production and the Marine's not going to come out quite as fast. Might be able to snipe a reactor before he leaves. He's completely destroying the economy of Tasia. The SCV count is dropping, and meanwhile, he's been able to establish that fourth base and get his own economy up and running. Some awesome moves here, and we've seen it throughout this series already. Actually, hold that thought. The Royal Marines here looking to trap these Mutalisks. Playing with fire, I feel like I've seen this situation before, pretty comical, but he does manage to slip out at the cost of a few mutas and his overseer. But remember with the SCV count being so low, yes, the overall supply leans much more favorable towards the army size, but to replenish it is yes. the big difference. If life takes a good fight, a good trade, then it's going to be a lot more difficult for Tasia to rebuild that. Only down to 36 SCVs. Some awesome moves here by Life to get back into this after losing this for time after time after time. And Life's Mutalisks have bought him a lot of time, allowing him to set up a big Baneling defense at his fourth base, trying to go for an engagement. Widowmind's actually trying to take out some of these units, going for the counterattack. And Marines are hurt pretty badly. There's no medevacs to heal them, but a nice defense from Tasia holding those counter swings and suddenly the supply even once again worker oh. lead for life though does mean that Tasia has more fighting units Tasia has a lot of units back at home to defend against counter attacks but he also has a lot of units on the left hand side as well and is he going to be able to move towards that fourth base life realizes he doesn't want to lose that fourth base families come in here not the best of trades actually gets a decent amount of marines but there's a lot more marines where they came from the rules are quite high in numbers as well in the sky and yeah, look, it's an mind. equal game between them. The supply is so close. Widowmine aids quite well. Marines are running back with that Thor. And he looks like he might be able to get a nice position on this base. The Banelings detonate on Marauders. There's still a lot of Marines here for Tasia. Denying this fourth base could put a, a nail in the coffin of the economy for life. He's been denied this fourth for so long. It really comes down to making these Mutalisks cost effective in every way possible. And this is another way. There's no missile turret at the third of Tasia. Uh-oh, there's Marines inside that main base. Got to be careful. These are three, three Marines as well. And that fourth hatchery was picked off a nice move by Tasia to bring his opponent's economy down as well as, you know, trying to keep his own alive. 36 SCVs. This is a nail-biting game here between these two players. But with that fourth base being picked off, the Banelings, again, are going to have a very hard time to keep their count high to deal with the high Marine count. And it, it, it's really, really difficult for life right now in this position, but trying to take the base on the right side again. Tasia's actually running out of money as well. He's replenished, yeah. he's got like 36 SCVs. 
He does have a lot of energy stored up on these orbitals. He could float out the main command center to the third base area. It's actually still enough, I think, worth a couple meals inside of what, what his main base was. But Tasia, I, it's still one of those situations. I think if either one of these players takes a single bad engagement, this game could be over for the other. And we don't mind not able to do any shots. The Zerglings once again slipping in, dealing some damage to the economy of the Liquid Terran player. And they're getting into the main base as well. I think there's a drop to the bottom left, but that has been answered by Startel. Life Mulus. Oh! Huge score for Tasia. Pressing that back. The Zerglings finally being cleaned up inside of that main, but he's splintering off more towards the third of Tasia. The SMB's under attack. He's actually making sure to pick off missile turrets as well so that the Mutalisks can maintain their utility. And at the, at the same time, the fourth hatchery is completing the long distance mining drones can finally get some money. Tasia scans like, okay, this is, you know, you can kind of, I mean, yeah. almost if he had laser beams coming out of his eyes, I mean, focused straight on that base. He knows that is a number one priority target because these counterattacks will make taking a fourth a nightmare for Tasia. And Tasia trying to build up an army big enough where he can defend at the same time as attacking because of Lai's relentless aggression. And Tasia should start to want to make the march to the right hand side. Does not, as you say, does not want that fourth base to be mined from. It's crucial for this game considering how low of an economy game this is. And look at this, Tasia's got a lot of units in the middle of the map chasing down the Mulas. We do have Bailings on the left hand side which do get stopped. And that is a lot of Marines. Mulas getting ripped from the sky. And he's going to make the march towards his base. Tasia, life really needs to be able to defend this. And there's five Bailings, 20 more on the way, but they won't be here in time. This hatchery will fall. Again denied economy is the Star Tail Zerg. The Bailings are chasing up, but now they'll be advancing off creep, so we can't really press this. Widowmind gets another shot, and even if the splash damage doesn't kill a clump of Mutalisks, at this point, every single one of them is oh. worth their weight in gold, and now Tasia dropping uh -oh. the Mule Rain the onto this fresh mineral pack. It's really swinging in favor of Tasia. Look at the income numbers to the top left. He's gaining a lot of money through having that base, and he's stopped life from mining. Life needs to do the same. He needs to stop his opponent from mining from that. Otherwise, the army strength is going to become way too big. Look at the supply differences. Already starting to take its toll on this game. And Tasia starting to take a big lead here with that mining base compared who isn't at this point. Tasia trying to get in position to close this game out with that flourishing economy. Oh. Widowmind's getting some nice shots on these Banelings. There are more Banelings headed towards that fourth, but not able to make anything happen. Tasia's ready. He catches it. He looks on the left base. He can't even afford to try taking this fourth again. The Team Liquid Terran wants this victory, wants Dreamhack Winter, and he wants that first place prize over life. He's pressing into uh -oh. the third base. The Banelings, this will be the last defensive maneuver made by the Star Tails. The Banelings are all gone. It's just Mutalisks versus Marines and two Thors. This is not a fight that life can win. There's nothing left to go for counterattacks with. The rest of the army coming down the map for He's Tasia. Bring Pushes in. The third hatchery's gone. The fourth base on the right side. His last hope, his last vestige of his own for defense. But 60 supply lead for Tasia. Moving towards the natural. Drone's getting snapped up. He's got the economy. He has the army. The Mutalisks have everything to fight, but they needs. don't want to fight against 3 3 Marines in the family. They really don't want to take this fight. And Tasia is taking a massive lead. It looks like Tasia is gonna do the it. Final unit oh. 